Welcome again to La Liga Insiders. I'm Fernando Palomo, joined by Gemma Soler and Rodrigo Fires. We're going to go right inside La Liga after another 1-0 victory by Barcelona. A record 1-0 win against Osasuna. And Osasuna side that was clearly thinking about next week's Copa del Rey final. And Barcelona went all out, but they couldn't do anything but a Jordi Alba goal. As for Real Madrid, they lost. Yes, they were thinking about the Copa del Rey final as well. They lost in San Sebastián, the former home of Xavi Alonso. We have news on him. And what about that social media post from Dani Carvajal after his red card? We first going to listen to what Xavi had to say after, again, the record 11th 1-0 victory from Barcelona this season. No, no, todavía no, pero bueno, es un paso de gigante, ¿no? Y de haber empatado hoy era un paso... Atrás, pues muy importante, ¿no? Entonces creo que hemos merecido la victoria, es una evidencia, ¿no? Además, jugando contra, contra diez, o sea, es una, se, ha, se ha defendido muy bien, pero creo que, que por errores nuestros no ha sido un partido más, más holgado, ¿no? Más tranquilo. Pero bueno, al final, eh, quizás sienta mejor ganar a, con casi, casi a la épica al final, ¿no? Es merecido, es merecido. All right, so do you think, Gemma, that Xavi is really pleased that they brought on the... Uh epic victory against a side that was playing for more than an hour with 10 men? Hola, Fer. No, I don't think that Xavi is uh, satisfied with the fact that it was the, the epic. Jordi Alba became a hero. He was probably expecting uh, a game more similar to the victory against Betis, uh, more control of the game, playing well with a powerful midfield and uh, creating chances, but quality ones and not desperate uh, chances. It's true that uh, Uh, the fact that the Osasuna were one man down, it might, you might think it's something good for Barcelona, but uh, it made Osasuna play in a different way, in a way that they were not expected. Uh, and it's true that uh, Barcelona, they, they were looking like somehow a little bit lost. Uh, there was a, a lack of physicality, uh, intensity, I, I think, so something similar to what we experienced in Vallecas, and that's why Xavi was not satisfied. It's true that it's uh, another one meal. Um, the 11th, as you were mentioning, something historical. And, and it is not that Barcelona tried to be defensive, it's that they, they couldn't uh, open that uh, powerful defense of uh, Osasuna. And yeah, uh, Xavi was not happy, but it's true that these 11 1 uh, nil victories uh, means 33 points. And at the end of the day, is uh, that kind of results that uh, put Barcelona in the verge of clinching La Liga title. Yeah, and that and the fact that, that Real Madrid lost, that extends their lead and that just puts them one victory away from from winning La Liga title maybe next week against CD rivals Espanol. But Rodri, this is a team that's closing out the season, lacking what we expect from a Barcelona side, especially led by a, a, a manager like the player that Xavi was. It's not a spectacle at all. Yeah, and indeed, Fernando, when you see what they have ahead in this Barça schedule, Espanol, Real Sociedad, Valladolid, Mallorca, Celta, Vigo, they have the chance to say, okay, we're going to take Barça's DNA back because if I were a Barça supporter now at this moment, I would tell Laporta, give my money back <laughs> now as soon as possible because, okay, Barça has proved that they are the best squad in this season so far because defensively is one of the top three top three teams worldwide you get uh, a bill at the at the back but then what about the rest the midfield the attacking line i mean the way they play this is not the barca this is the less barca that we've seen in the past 15 years i mean they don't try to pass the ball take the ball pass the ball take the ball like in the guardiola era i know that they don't have the players that guardiola used to have but at least They have to show a little bit more. They need to play a little bit better. Because if not, you're talking about Atletico Madrid or Real Madrid. But you are, when you talk about Barca, you need something else. You only have to win, but you have to play better and try to, I don't know, to, to make the supporters a little bit happier. And I understand that this year they need to win because of the financial situation is what it is. I mean, uh, they are struggling a lot and they need titles to get some sponsors in for the summer, window transfer. But at the end of the day, they have to stop, they have to think, they have to analyze how they've won this La Liga. It's well-deserved 
for me is the base of everything but they need to improve a little bit the game if they don't play better next year they're gonna be another team more they won't be less than a club any longer well you brought up you open up a, a whole can of worms over here i don't know if we're gonna have enough time in this uh in this <laughs> episode of la liga insiders to just talk about what you just said you know are, are, is barcelona actually changing the way they are Gemma? to finish this this off they signed Robert Lewandowski this season, expecting to be just that, a spectacle again in front of goal. Yet this team has scored just one more goal than last year's team at this stage of the season. And last year's team had Aubameyang, had Memphis. It did not have the, the big signing that the Polish player is. Definitely not playing Lewandowski at the level that he is expected to be playing. Yeah, I think that's fair to, to say, Fernando. It's true that uh, probably in the first half of the season, Lewandowski was a phenomenal. Uh, it, it was surprising the way that he adapted to Barcelona, to La Liga, to to be able to have uh, to score so much and have that great numbers. And uh, we're talking about Yin and Yang, and then the second half of the season after the World Cup, he is absolutely unable to to have these uh, good results, to score. You can see his body language in, in, in the field. He's uh, very much uh, frustrated. It's true that true. I think there is two factors there. One is the, the physicality of the player himself, the, the fact that it's been a really tough season. He has been experiencing some discomfort, some pain. Uh, not that he's been injured, because he's the player after Ter Stegen who has uh, been playing more minutes. Uh, of the of the squad, but it's true that he he even himself he, he explained that the, the day before facing Girona he wasn't able to walk that morning, and then thanks to the physical therapist he he could play. Um, you can see that he is not as fit as he used to, and it's true that uh, for many. Uh, games in the second half of the season, Xavi has been using that four midfielder system that it's not helping his way of playing that much. Uh, and then the fact that he has lost uh, some of his best partners in crime when talking to the goal. I'm talking about uh, Dembélé, Pedri that he's been injured as well, Frankie de Jong for some games um, as well. So there's been a lack of uh, consistency in the final third for Barcelona and, and Lewandowski himself, he hasn't been that, that fit. And, and yeah, I think the second half of the season is disappointing uh, of the Polish striker. And of course, playing at home in the 10th minute, another t chance for those messy chants to come alive. Gemma, it, now it seems that things are happening and developing in, in, in a way that we can sense that the messy topic is not going to go away anytime soon. He's been suspended by PSG for two weeks with no pay, no training, basically left off the team. L'Equipe now publishes that PSG are not about to sit down with them and his, uh, his group to talk about a contract renewal. Uh, are the paths inching closer to meeting at some point? Messi's and Barcelona's path? Well, uh, we're uh, uh, waiting for, for that uh, possibility uh, first. No, no, I'm not saying that he's going to sign, but we are waiting for him to arrive in Barcelona. We have some colleagues in the, in the private terminal airport to see if he decides to come to his house in, in Castelldefels in Barcelona to spend those two, two weeks that he's going to be suspended. He cannot train. He cannot go to uh, Camp de Loges. So uh, let's see what he does in, in this uh, couple of weeks where he will be, of course, having a lot of time to think about his uh, future, about his future in Barcelona, as you mentioned, another day in the office at Camp Nou, minute 10, a messy, messy chance. This chance, um, uh, we knew the, the suspension of PSG a little bit later than that minute 10 in the Camp Nou, because otherwise, I think if uh, the fan base of Barcelona would have known that sanction, it would have been much stronger, the, the chantings. And um, yeah, our we've, we've just uh, one of our colleagues, Fernando Polo at Mundo Deportivo, he, he has an, an information just uh, released now that uh, Lionel Messi would have already told PSG that he doesn't want to accept that renewal uh, proposal, and that's why PSG are so feel so outraged for that uh, Saudi Arabia trip and and that substantial. Uh, what we can add to to that is uh, that. Uh, mm, 
Barcelona, there, there is in Barcelona there is a little bit of pessimism regarding to La Liga and the financial fair play numbers because there are different versions and La Liga is not responding before uh, giving an offer to to Messi and his agent, of course, his uh, father Jorge Messi. They want to make sure that this is accepted by La Liga, so they are still in this process. But we will be t t talking a little. Uh, later on of this earthquake that means the, the departure of Matteo Alemany. And we can say that Matteo Alemany is one of the persons in the board of members who was more uh, sceptical in, in the fact of uh, having Messi back, not because he didn't want, but because he thought it was extremely difficult, that operation. So let's see if this departure can open the door somehow to this Lionel Messi return. We're going to be talking about Matteo Alemán later on, about the timing of that uh, announcement as well, just as Barcelona were winning a game that was putting them, again, closer than ever this Liga season in, in winning the title. They announced that they're going to part ways with the sports director, uh, the sports director that John Laporta brought over in his second stint as, uh, as president. Now, Rodri, this on the same day that Real Madrid go to San Sebastián, yet yeah, with five or six starters left off the uh, the traveling squad but with a team that's supposed to be fighting as well for for some energy that would push him for that Copa del Rey final yet they lost again for the eighth time after the World Cup this is the eighth time that Real Madrid has lost since they came back from the World Cup in Qatar What happened last night in that Real Sociedad Real Madrid game is the proof of what Real Madrid has done in this La Liga so far. I mean, this is a disaster tournament for Real Madrid. And we understand that this is a difficult week because you're going to face in the weekend uh, in that Copa del Rey final against Osasuna, you're going to face um, die or leaving game because you need a title as soon as possible for Ancelotti and for the rest of the players. But the image that Real Madrid showed in Real Sociedad game it was awful. It was awful and this is something to forget about next season because Real Madrid doesn't need to, to be like that and, and we're not only talking about what happened in uh, Anoeta we gotta talk about what happened in Girona and what happened in some other games like Villarreal or so because Real Madrid this year doesn't really like that or doesn't really seem to like La Liga and it's like Uh, you know, if you put in the place of the players, it's like, okay, we need a win, but we prefer maybe compete a little bit better and play better for Champions League, for Copa del Rey, and for some other tournament out of La Liga because we won La Liga last year. And for Real Madrid, this is not enough. Real Madrid, if you are a player of Real Madrid or if you are the coach of Real Madrid, you need to win every single year and you are not going to be... Um, you don't have to be that far away from Barcelona, which is uh, 14 points distance, which is something that for me is a disaster for Real Madrid because you need to prove that you are Real Madrid, you get a uh, win, you get a compete at least against Barcelona or against Atletico Madrid. And at this point of the season, we are uh, debating that maybe Atletico Madrid, if they win against Cadiz, they're going to be ahead of you in La Liga and you're going to be the third uh, at the third position. So that is why in that game it proved that Ancelotti doesn't really trust in, in the bench because uh, Mariano was the starter and he proved why he hasn't mm -hmm. had the uh, minimum amount of minutes during the whole season and the rest I mean, they were thinking about Copa del Rey final against Osasuna. They were not thinking about Real Sociedad when you lose and when you have that image in uh, such a difficult game uh, like, for example, it was Real Sociedad last night. Let's listen in to what Carlo Ancelotti had to say yesterday in San Sebastián after their 2-0 loss to Imanol side. Bueno, no, 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 no es la mejor forma para preparar este partido porque una derrota siempre duele, siempre te da un poco más de preocupación, te baja un poco la, la dinámica, las buenas sensaciones, entonces esta no es la manera mejor de, 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 de preparar lo que está veniendo, es claro que es evidente que en la cabeza de los jugadores eh, hay mucho más eh, la final de sábado, hay mucho más la semifinal, eh. esto afecta el, eh, la concentración en los partidos, eh, es cuando tú no tienes una buena concentración al final regala. You cannot really be more direct 
than Carlo Ancelotti was in San Sebastian. He also went on to say, when, when asked about Eder Militao and his form, a player he mentioned was the best center back in the world. He said, well, <laughs> about his recent form, he goes, maybe he needs to wake up. But isn't he the one to wake up the players? Isn't he the one to tell them, hey, guys, listen, if you want to play on Saturday in that final, show me today what you have? Yeah, uh, he was uh, really direct with that uh, wake-up call to, to Mil Militao. And it's true that it's a player that he has defended him and praised it so much in the, in the past. Uh, yeah, he was, of course... Uh, uh, extremely disappointed with that defeat and the performance. It's true that they were uh, having a lot of uh, injured players and not available uh, players. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's the coach. He's the one the responsible of waking up these uh, players. But I think Real Madrid is a team that they have a, a strange uh, ability that not all the teams have, is that, that turn on and turn off uh, themselves. Uh, this means uh, play... Uh, um, uh, not a relaxed game, I'm not going to say they were relaxed, but they were absolutely with uh, the focus somewhere else in, in Reale Arena and then being able to play a great final. And they have been doing this uh, over and over again in the in the Champions League uh, in the in the last over uh, the last uh, decade. So, yeah, of course, uh, it's uh, there is a big part of res responsibility of uh, Carlo Ancelotti in the fact that the players uh, were probably uh, not in, in the tune of, of that. But, but I, I'm almost sure that the message of Carlo Ancelotti was uh, um, to, to play, to, to win that game against uh, Real Sociedad, knowing that sometimes the, the dynamics that you get in the in the previous game will will affect you, but the, the, the players didn't take it too much serious and, and they were already thinking on, on Osasuna and in La Cartuja. You know what happened to Job Hinkes, right? In 1998, when they went on to win the, the Champions League final, right? They had yeah. pretty much given up on the league. Well, it, it hasn't been since then that we have seen a, or it's been since then that we have seen a Real Madrid side so bad in in the second round of hmm. of La Liga. Not not since the Jumbo Henkes Henkes days in 1998 have we not seen after 14 match days in the second round of La Liga a team that has performed so bad as this one that Carlo Ancelotti is guiding. Yet they still have the semifinals in the Champions League and. The Copa del Rey this uh, Saturday, a game that you'd be able to watch on our platforms on ESPN Plus at 3 p.m. Eastern in the United States from La Cartuja in Sevilla, Real Madrid, Osasuna, as they fight off in the Copa del Rey final. Osasuna playing their first final since 2005. Let's go now into insiders and more information from Gemma and Rodri as we get to know more from the news inside La Liga. Rodri, Xavi Alonso in the news. Uh, does it have to do with the fact that Carlo Ancelotti is being doubted on at this point? Well, it could be linked because uh, I remember the first time that we reported on Xavi Alonso's future, we said that Real Madrid, once Xavi Alonso got to Bundesliga to coach Bayer Leverkusen, was going to be very, very aware of what Xavi Alonso was doing in Germany because Florentino Perez and Xavi Alonso, they have a special relationship and uh, Xavi Alonso is, is viewed uh, from the Real Madrid perspective like one of the potential coaches to, to get Real Madrid in a maybe soon future. Uh, we don't really know if uh, Carlo Ancelotti is going to be next season's Real Madrid coach or not because it will depend on the image of Real Madrid in those semi-finals against Manchester City. But the thing is that Real Madrid are really aware, as we reported almost one year ago, of what Xavi Alonso are, is achieving at the Bundesliga. Uh, for sure, 100%, Real Madrid are uh, thinking about Xavi Alonso as a future coach of Real Madrid, but they don't really know if they're going to uh, take the chance for now if finally Carlo Ancelotti leaves Real Madrid bench or maybe you'll wait for more, one more year to see if this Xavi Alonso development still goes like this year which is something amazing I mean we already know what he did on, on this season so far at the Bundesliga when he took Bayer Leverkusen and he avoided relegation and now he's fighting 
for getting into the European positions for the next year. He's doing a great job and that is why Real Madrid are still monitoring and really interested on Xavi Alonso for Real Madrid bench in the future. Well, we know Xavi Alonso's capacity as a midfielder and he's shown so. He's got the brains to coach, as he said, on, on many benches as well. One of them in the uh, Real Sociedad's B team. And he did a great job there too. It was a pleasure to watch that, that side. Messi news seems to never end, Gemma. Uh, we talked about that. We talked about what could become of him and, and PSG and him with Barcelona. He will be part of, of the many topics talked about in a very busy summer for Barcelona. Oh, yes. Uh, Matteo Alemán said it's going to be an entertaining summer. And uh, we're still not officially in summer, but it looks like it has already started. There was a earthquake yesterday in, in Barcelona. And I'm going to tell you when. Two minutes, only two minutes after the press conference uh, post-game of Xavi Hernández ended. There was a press release by Barcelona uh, making official the, the departure of Mateu Alemán. Um, why this timing? Because uh, it's a desire of uh, Alemán himself uh, and they wanted to avoid uh, avoid Xavi Hernández having to talk about this, Jordi Cruyff that he also has an interview post-game having to, to, to talk about uh, something that it's true that uh, I'm, it's not the first time that Matteo Alemán has thoughts about continuing or not, but uh, it's, it's the first time that when uh, they decided to, to, to continue in, in different ways and he had a really good offer from Aston Villa. So he's uh, deciding to, to go away from, from Barcelona. Why? Uh, which, which are, which are the, the, the reasons? There are many, many reasons. This good offer is one, of course. The other one is that he has a different vision in uh, key um, uh, things that uh, they, they see, they have different visions uh, himself and, and Joan Laporta and it's true that in Barcelona there is the, the, the figure of the president is a very powerful one and he has the last thing to say and he wasn't feeling very comfortable with that that's why he decided to take uh, he will be deciding when it's official to take another offer from the, the, the Premier League. What's going to happen in Barcelona because it's true that the press relief uh, tells us that he will finish that uh, the summer transfer market but it looks very strange that uh, a person that he's thinking on another club will be finishing uh, such a capital uh, summer crucial with so many uh, names in the air as you pointed uh, Lionel uh, Messi we, we still don't know who's gonna be the, the substitute uh, um, just uh, after that uh, uh, announcement official announcement Antonio Cordon was a name that was uh, more mentioned like an interim almost uh, uh, quick solution but uh, in the last few hours uh, there is another name that it's uh, in everyone talks in in Barcelona and this is the former player Deco uh, he's a very he has an extremely good relationship with president Joan Laporta and at this point of the crucial situation of Barcelona, uh, I think it makes sense that Joan Laporta will be having at his side someone that has the exactly same vision, that wants to do the same kind of operations. And amongst these operations, one, the, the capital one, the, the big one that Le Joan Laporta wants, is the, the return of Lionel Messi. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, Matteo Alemán was uh, someone a bit critical with that uh, decision because he thought it was impossible to bring Messi back and have a competitive squad and, and deal with the financial fair play. One of the players that currently is represented by that name, by Deco, is Rafinha, who's also yes. uh, one of the one of those uh, sour topics when it came to Mateo Alemán, whether it was it uh, right for him, a right fit for Barcelona, or is it one to be uploaded for, for next season? Anyways, uh, I, we're already talking about the market. As Gemma said, Rodri, it's not yet summer, but there's summer news going on in the Real Madrid circles as well. Yes, because uh, Carlo Ancelotti doesn't really matter if he's Real Madrid coach or not next season. Have, uh, he has asked Real Madrid board to get a striker for next season because they have a struggle a lot in that position because uh, they can't depend on Karim Benzema's healthy for, for one more year, as it happened this year. Even Karim Benzema, in this renewal that is about to be official, he has asked 
the the president of uh, Florentino Perez to get a new striker because he need a little bit of rest and he he feels like he's even more pressured than some other or any other player at Real Madrid squad due to that lack of uh, substitutions because you can depend on Mariano because he doesn't really count on Ancelotti or whoever could be Real Madrid coach next season and the thing is that they don't have any more strikers because you can uh, use uh, then Hazard he doesn't really count like uh, Mariano or maybe change the position of Rodrigo Goes which is something that really didn't uh, work this season for Real Madrid so that is why Carlo Ancelotti has asked Real Madrid for a new striker maybe one Benzema substitute to try to replace a French guy or even to try to compete against Benzema and make a transition for the near future but the thing is that everyone at Real Madrid the board members uh, the technical staff and even the locker room they agree for the first time ever maybe at Real Madrid that they need a Benzema replacement for next year they don't want to leave again that lack of goals in any part of the season so that is why they're gonna look for in that window in that summer window transfer for some striker let's see what happens because we've mentioned before uh, I think it was like two months ago that maybe Blaubitz that maybe some other similar names like Richarlison could be on that bit let's see what happens because there are only two names among some other names of big strikers in Europe. Gemma, we go again to Barcelona and, and again to news of agents and, and maybe transfers. And if there's one big name in the transfer market, it's always that one of Jorge Mendes, who is linked to a couple of youngsters at Barcelona that are integral for Barca's future. Yes, he is a big name uh, in, in the transfer market, but especially when you talk about uh, Barcelona, because he has a lot of power in, in the youngsters of the Blaugranas. Yeah, Jorge Mendes is in, in Barcelona. Yesterday he had a, a meeting. Uh, when the Barcelona game against Osasuna, he was uh, being, having a, a meeting in a nearby hotel uh, with uh, Bori Fati, the father and agent of uh, Ansu Fati. And it's funny because there was uh, our colleagues of uh, the media were just outside that uh, door and, and Bori Fati, when, when they ask, is he going to stay? Because, of course, the fact that he's not having enough minutes is, is making uh, doubtful the future of uh, Ansu Fati and Bori Fati, he said with, this with these words, like, is he going to stay? And he said, Se queda, he stays, which is the exactly the same sentences that Gerard Piquet used to, to say that Neymar, se queda, he will stay. So it's been a little bit funny that, that question. And Jorge Mendes um, have had a, a meeting earlier today with uh, a private meeting with uh, Joan Laporta to talk about uh, the, the wishes of uh, Ansu Fati. It is to stay, but the guarantee that he will be playing, enjoying more minutes in Barcelona, but also to talk about the renewals of uh, two new gems of uh, Barcelona. One is uh, Alejandro Balde, is uh, on the way that uh, that uh, renewal uh, and, and they want to be able to work on that before the 30th of June. And Lamin Yamal, the 15-year-old wonder, 15-year-old wonder boy that he has already uh, made his uh, debut and that he needs to, to have a professional contract in before July when he will become a 16 year old he can have his first contract and and in both parts there is this, this, the same vision that he Barcelona wants him to stay uh, Xavi showing him with that uh, premature debut that he's important and he will be enjoying uh, opportunities in in Barcelona and and Mendes and and Lamal Yamin Lamal he he really wants to stay and they think they can reach an agreement before that day the uh, June the 30th now, Rodri, we go to the middle of the field now at Real Madrid. The, the middle of the field needs a ball to be handled. And so far, a youngster in European football that handles this precious equipment better than Jude Bellingham is nowhere to be found. And Real Madrid are closer to him than ever, right? Yeah, I like the ball, Fernando, <laughs> and he likes even more the ball because he got the chance to play for Real Madrid and to play that ball next season in La Liga. Real Madrid are closing in to sign Jude Bellingham for next season, and for not only for next season, but for the next 
six seasons um, because this is something a great movement for Real Madrid they are still fighting I mean no one at Real Madrid can confirm that they are going to sign 100% Jude Bellingham because they don't really trust the way everything have gone in in these past months because we remember this roller coaster around Bellingham we remember that at the beginning of the season we reported that the Real Madrid were the main favorites later on Liverpool came in before Christmas as the main favorites to sign the the English uh, international player then the Manchester City the last time we reported on Bellingham the Man City were the main contenders to sign Bellingham and suddenly Real Madrid have appeared again uh, trying and proving that um, uh, what we reported in that last uh, time the Man City were the main favorites saying that Real Madrid were really happy by the way they have worked for all the whole season and that is why they uh, they didn't throw the towel on Jude Bellingham and in these 15 days in this past 15 days they have advantage Manchester City again and now they are the main contenders to get Jude Bellingham for the next six seasons at Real Madrid let's see what happens in the following days but what they uh, tell us from our sources at Real Madrid is that Jude Bellingham's word have been perfect perfect and vital in this last part of the negotiation because uh, meanwhile uh, Jude Bellingham's uh, camp wanted Bellingham to play at the Premier League he still wanted to play for Real Madrid in La Liga because he wanted to feel what uh, it feels like to, to, to wear that sleeve to defend that shield of Real Madrid so that is why he is stepping in and Real Madrid are closing in really 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 dangerous to get Jude Bellingham and he's uh, in this past stage in this last stage of the negotiation let's see if they finally agree uh, Jude Bellingham looks like in the next two weeks Real Madrid are gonna sign the player but let's see what happens but this is the best part of all Real Madrid are closer than ever to sign Jude Bellingham, which is the most important thing for Real Madrid future. I'm going to make everybody just remember what happened at the latter stages of last transfer window, the last summer transfer window. Jordi Alba, we all thought, was headed to Inter Milan. That was the team that was signing Jordi Alba. Jordi Alba knew nothing about it, but it was all over the news. Let's fast forward. Jordi Alba scores against Osasuna, the goal that puts Barcelona closer to winning the title. From what happened to be booze at the beginning of September, to cheering him on as if they want him to stay forever there, Gemma. Well, uh, depends a little bit on the on the salary, but this is true. And, and not only that he was in the verge of, of leaving the club, it's true that... Uh, the, they wanted to push him really out of the club, not only because of his uh, performances, but the fact that, uh, that, that his age and also his big salary, because he's one of the all rock stars that signed that uh, contract with former president Jose Maria Bartomeu that makes that every season he makes more money. And this makes it very difficult to work with the uh, critical fair, financial fair play that Barcelona has right now. But it's true that uh, sometimes the fans, uh, they they forget about this this kind of thing. And, and it's true that with uh, the attitudes he showed in, in the past, he was not the most popular uh, player at the, the Camp Nou, but this season he accepted being a substitute. and. Every time he had a chance to play, he will accept it. There's been no bad attitudes when being changed or, or this kind of thing. And, and the truth is, I, I thought about talking about this just before he scored, because it's true that he accepts being a substitute. He, and he puts a lot of times, we've seen this against Sevilla yesterday, against Osasuna, he puts the games upside down. And what he managed to do uh, yesterday, it's true that he was lucky with that goal. And the, the from the boost to the cheers, it was uh, an explosion of that. So what's going to happen with Jordi Alba? Uh, his position hasn't changed. He wants to finish his contract. This means that he wants to play next season and that his contract is going to be, uh, the salary per year next season is going to be 36 million euros before taxes. That's a lot of money for a, a fullback. Uh, that's a lot of money for a Barcelona uh, player. Uh, and we will see what Barcelona decides. As I was mentioning, talking before about Matteo Alemán, his opinion was not to, to do everything they, he, he could 
to avoid these uh, old contracts because he thought that it was impossible to, to deal with that. And it's true that if you want to give uh, have Messi back, it's very difficult that you can pay these two salaries. Uh, plus, let's see what happened with Sergio uh, Busquets. Uh, it's also true that Jordi Alba is one of the best friends of Lionel Messi in this locker room. Jordi Alba himself and Sergio Busquets. Uh, so the position of the player is that one. He wants to continue. He's going to be at that soon. So he doesn't think about anything that is moving uh, from away from Barcelona. He has one more year contract and he might be uh, willing to talk about a possible um, salary cut because this one of one of the reasons because he was being booed because he was pointed like one of the players that didn't want to take a pay cut. So it can be a negotiation in that, but never in the fact that he will be wanting to leave Barcelona. Uh, Gemma, I, I stopped listening after you said 36 million euros. Before taxes, yeah. That's a crazy number. I, I, like, pfft, seriously. <laughs> that, I can't put my face in an emoji that, that exists when, when you hear that Jordi Alba is worth 36 million euros before taxes. Well, let's go into another, um, Fullback, and this happened uh, yesterday as well, alongside match day 33 in La Liga. Minute eight of the second half, Dani Carvajal gets a yellow for descent. Nine minutes after that, he commits a foul. Second yellow, he's thrown out. Five minutes after he's been thrown out, he grabs his cell phone, posts this emoji with a blank, a black screen, and this curious emoji that he proceeded to delete after that. Clearly, in in protest of, of what happened with Polido Santana, the referee. He, he was thrown out first for, again, dissent, for arguing with the referee, and then a clear second yellow after a foul. This emoji has been deleted. Don't go look at uh, Danny Carvajal's stories because that emoji and that story is not there anymore. Rodri, what can we make of this? What was Danny Carvajal meaning when he, when he posted this? Uh, well, he was laughing at the referee 100% because, you know, I've talked to Real Madrid locker room and they confirmed it, this, this system. The thing is that after the game of Real Madrid, are you going to laugh about the referee? And we understand that maybe you don't agree with what the referee have uh, performance uh, during the game, but you are a Real Madrid player and Real Madrid are still playing and you are playing on the Instagram. Are you serious? Come on, Carvajal, you are one of the captains and you get to be, you get to move on over the referee and whatever things happen in, in, in that game against Real Sociedad. I mean, you get to be a little bit more serious and you get to give example, not only for the rest of the locker room, but also for all the youngsters that are in the Real Madrid Academy. Are that the way the Real Madrid treated uh, uh, the referees? I don't agree with that, so please focus on what you got to be focused on and play a little bit better because this season for Carvajal has been a little bit terrifying. Gemma, your thoughts? My thought is that there should be some kind of security, something, for example, in Wall Street, when there is a, a tragedy, a catastrophe or, or something really strong, the, the market closes. So you're, the people are not able to buy or, or sell or, in the yes. rush of, of, on the heat of the moment. So I think that players probably for 10, 15, half an hour, wouldn't be able to, to open the Instagram or the social media. It, it would just not work because to avoid this kind of uh, reaction, because I, I think it's, I can understand that in the heat of the moment, he, he wanted to express his frustration with this emoji, but it's not very professional thinking that your colleagues are still playing you that next game. It's, it's, a, it's a crucial one. So You could see yeah. him leaving the field, Nacho trying to, to put his, his, Nacho's hand in Carvajal's mouth so that no one can see what or, or, <laughs> or even interpret where he, what he was saying. I would go against that. I'm all for players expressing themselves in the heat of the moment. Yes, they have to do it with some sort, some sort of respect, something that Carvajal didn't show the referee, who is another human being, maybe committing mistakes. In that case, he was totally right about sending Carvajal uh, Carvajal off. Well, Gemma, Rodri, next time we see each other in the Liga Insiders, we're going to be talking about a champion problem. Yes, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's going to be massive. That is going to be massive. And if things progress as they have been in the last couple of days, next La Liga Insiders will definitely be one 
to watch. Thank you, Gemma, Rodri. Have a great day.